perish, they shall have eternal life. I shall hold to the cross. I shall hold to God alone for His love has salvation. The fasting this week is an invitation to fast from speaking ill of others. And the spiritual challenge is to pray for our enemies. I wonder if you are like me and find yourself in patterns of speaking ill of others. That that neighbor who annoys you, annoys you with everything that he does. Whether it's the failure to clean up the leaves that are on the corner or the way that he plays with his child in the front yard. Regardless of what it is, I sometimes think that we get into these patterns of speaking ill of others. And we always speak ill of them. So the invitation this week is to begin to notice if we have developed a relationship with that negativity. And having noticed that then, what does it look like for us to begin to pray for our neighbor of whom we speak ill? To take it all the way is to pray for our enemies. In order to do that, we first have to tell the truth about ourselves, and that is that there's conflict in our lives, that not all of our relationships are flourishing. Sometimes the tension that is in our lives, we wouldn't ever go so far as to say that someone is our enemy. But we make enemies out of one another when all we see is the negative that the other does when all we see is how they stumble, when all we see is their failures. So first, as you enter into this week, your invitation is to take an assessment of the relationships in your lives. And whether it is the person across the street or the person closest to you, have you made an enemy out of them? And if so, why? I shall wait upon the Lord. I shall wait upon His word. By His grace, I am released. By His grace, I am redeemed. In the invitation to fast from speaking ill of others, implicit in that invitation is to fast from speaking ill of ourselves as well. Have we made enemies out of ourselves? Have we become our own worst critic? Is the internal dialogue that you have ongoing about yourself one of negativity and derision and criticism? Do you believe that God loved you so much that he gave Jesus 
so that you could be in relationship with him and so that you could be redeemed from seeing yourself as an enemy so that you could be freed from having to constantly criticize everything that you do and say what does it look like to let go of yourself as an enemy and instead to embrace that you are one beloved by God who looks upon you and says, I am especially fond of you. You are deeply and wholly loved by the creator of the universe who made you in his image. And as broken and in need of redemption as we may be, there is enough about this world that is going to break us down and criticize us we don't need to contribute to that with our own voices against ourselves. So as you pray for your enemies, pray also for yourself. It is an honest reflection of the commandment that Jesus called us to, to love our neighbors as ourselves. And if we were to tell the truth, many of us have a hard time loving ourselves. You are worthy of love and belonging because God loves you so much. He gave up heaven and being enthroned there in order to come and be present with you here, dwelling within you. So let us not grieve the Holy Spirit with our self-condemnation and criticism this week. But let us let go of the critic and embrace the love of Jesus. By his precious blood I have been set free for the glory of Jesus' name. I surrender all now to Christ alone in Jesus I am seen for oh God so loved the world that he gave his only son whosoever be May the God of grace and glory go with you as you follow this Lenten path, wherever it takes you and to whomever it takes you. May you go with the blessing of God. May the source of life hold you in the faith. The word of life speak clearly in truth around you. And the breath of life, of grace, of wisdom, sing in your inmost being this day and all of your days. Amen. Mm -hmm.